A man is in his kitchen when police burst in and their dog goes on the attack. They were looking for two burglars, but not him. Pretty disturbing. WREG investigator Jessica Gertler uncovers the body camera footage and asks, how could this happen? We want to warn you, the video is disturbing. Message 911. A rainy night in January 2021. Tell me what you need police to for. Uh, there's a break in into the building at first congregational church in Cooper Young staff called 911. I've got a camera. I've got a security camera that you're looking from home. Yes, officers arrived and talked to staff at the church. So there's one other person that's supposed to be. He's in a locked apartment upstairs. Okay, you then see officers enter the building with a canine unit followed by an announcement. Memphis Police Department canine unit come out over release the dog. <laughs> Come on now! The dog is then taken off the leash and starts to lead the group. The church sits on almost an acre of land. We used our drone to give you an idea of the layout. Staff explained the three buildings are connected. There's a keypad to get from one part to the next. Staff told 911 the thieves were spotted in the middle building's basement. Up there is the hostel. <laughs> A few minutes into the search, you yeah. they encountered a resident, the only resident employees had warned officers about. He lives in the sanctuary, not in the hostile area. Officers continue north, and then they hear footsteps. That might be a hostel. They follow the noise to outside the hostel. The dispatcher gets the code from the employee who's remained on the line. Here's what the employee later told MPD Internal Affairs. I wasn't sure where they were. She asked me for a code. The code you provided them is, is a general code that opens all of the keypad locks. Uh, almost all, yes. Yeah. The officers don't announce themselves when they enter the hostel. I was oblivious to everything that was happening. Kyle Maxwell says he didn't know MPD was in the church, nor did he hear them enter the hostel where he lives. He was in the kitchen area at the time. I'm sure I was listening to a podcast. Just so you know, Maxwell told us he has no sight in his right eye and only 10% in his left, making it even harder to comprehend what happened next. I'm standing here, the door bursts open. I, I turn around. I didn't know what was going on. And I, I, I just knew that you know, several men were holding me down, that a dog was biting, was biting me. Relax. What are you doing here? I live here. Are you the gym? Yes. Are, you the, are you the guy that we just saw? We you told you to stay inside. I was terrified. I thought I was about to die. Maxwell is then handcuffed. Another tenant hears the commotion. Hey, do you know this? What are you doing? That's when police realized Maxwell wasn't the burglars they were looking for. It wasn't the man they encountered in the sanctuary either. The man they put in handcuffs was just a man in his kitchen. Officers told Internal Affairs they weren't given clear information. All they knew was that no one was supposed to be inside the building except for one person on the third floor. Maxwell's attorney, Jake Brown. There was just no, no reasonable basis for them to uh, be in this part of the building in the posture that they apparently were. He also questions why officers did not give a clear verbal announcement after using the keypad to enter the hostel. According to the K-9 unit trainer, they're not required to. He told internal investigators an announcement is encouraged on every building search, but there are times when you don't want to give your position away. He said they're also encouraged to have the dog off the leash during the search, as long as you know the building is secure. To expedite the finding of the people. The dogs can do it much faster than, than Humans can't. Dan Maxwell is a former officer and current professor at the University of New Haven. It's almost like a perfect storm of, of some things that just didn't didn't connect. We sent him the footage and internal affair documents to get his opinion. The officers were already at kind of a heightened state of awareness. This translates to the canine. The canines are extremely attuned to how their handlers are, are behaving. So is there anything to prevent a situation like this? Trying to get better information before everybody goes in. Better information from the complainant, 
better information via dispatch. He also said more training always helps. It's unclear if anything changed after this incident, since Internal Affairs only wrote up one officer for not wearing his body camera, not the same officer whose body camera ran out of battery. It really changed my opinion of the Memphis Police Department. Maxwell had multiple bite wounds on his leg and says he bruised his tailbone pretty bad. He's now filed a lawsuit and it appears officers don't blame him. It looks really bad on us, which we didn't intend to stick a dog on some guy making a snack. Jessica Gertler, WRAG News Channel 3. And now waiting for his stay in court. Officers never found the thieves in the building that night. Internal affairs documents state the officer and his canine partner had received training related to building searches for three years. 